want to live a powerless life life without identity kingdom of darkness does not acknowledge that i have come and i live under the yoke of the devil i don't want to live i don't want to live under the subjugation of the kingdom of darkness i believe in power i'm a creature of power i was fought by power i was created for power i have been given power if it will ever be then it will be by power The Bible says that when Jesus had a change of structure, morphe in the Greek, he was in the form of God. He did not think it robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. He said there's a change of structure. When he was in the form of God, he had the property of being omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. But when there was a switch in structure, he became subject to all the limitations that are around humanity. Are you with me? Was squeezed. He could be hungry. He could then be thirsty and he could also die. But that was not possible when he had a certain kind of structure. So when he became flesh, in order to satisfy the claims of divine justice, John revealed that we beheld his glory. Not his glory in that first form. His glory when he had taken on flesh. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father how was it expressed it was expressed in grace and truth that was his content that means if you squeeze jesus what will come out is grace and truth that's what the bible means when the bible says that he became poor of grace he was squeezed his content was squeezed out we are living on the virtue of christ what came out of him when he was squeezed Are you here? That is to say that everybody that ever operates under the anointing is indebted to Jesus. It will be a violation for you not to, because that's his glory. That grace that came upon his what? Is his glory. And the last time I checked, if you tamper with the glory of that's his due. His glory is his, not yours. And so he decided to release some of that glory to make you carry out the ministry he would have done if you were physically present. And then you take the glory. It's a violation because you have not understood the source. Are you with me? So as much as possible, if you are going to practice safe ministry, then your life must not contradict the hallowed personality of the Christ because it is on his excesses on his fullness that we have received grace for grace so that the first is educating is a most that turned to jesus and he said what no man I, I know you have walked through the pyramid of of the obelisk of necromancy i know that you have moved through the pyramid of visibility and you have seen people's stars i know that you have wielded the magic wand that can conjure spirits and invoke powers from the underworld but when you cross to this side no man huh, operating by the spirit can ever call jesus a curse and no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Those were the two laws he revealed to the Ezebu. Somebody in the congregation might ask me, is it not possible for an unbeliever to say Jesus is Lord? That is not what that scripture means. The meaning of that scripture is in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. 
For if thou shalt confess, eh, believe in thy heart the Lord Jesus, and confess with thy mouth that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You believed huh? in the Lord Jesus and you confess that he is immortal because death could not bind him. That kind of believing and confession can never be achieved except by what? Those were the two principles, the two laws that he gave. And we need to know these true laws because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This man brought a perspective of how to check that which is false. In the midst of the pool of various assortments of supernatural and spiritual. He said no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. My question is, if you were the teacher of the day, when a, a humongous number of magical practitioners decided to give their life to Christ, how will they fare under your tutelage? The second scenario. Time will fail us to go to the third scenario. Because the third scenario will be people that have experienced the devil in another way. You see, they are casual unbelievers and they are murderers and people that have spilled blood. And then you want they give their life to Christ. They are likely to go back if they do not have an encounter with the right kind of personnel that will educate them in the things of God. Are you with me now from the time that the book of Luke was written there were controversies as to what exactly were the articles of our belief system and he took a son of order to set things in order because he had a link with the eye witnesses now have you seen the level the the kind of doctrinal battles going on in the body of Christ. If you have been on Facebook for some time, you will see all kinds of strange things. I was trying to listen to the sermon of a pastor and he was preaching and trying to establish why a believer is not expected to confess his sin. It's not scriptural for you to attempt to confess your sin because Jesus paid for sin. He has paid the price for sin. So, what are you confessing? And that was what that service was about to exhort the believers how that they are wasting time when they are confessing sin. I know intuitively most of us know that that is wrong. But in the days in which we live, it's not sufficient for you to know, just to know that it's wrong. You should be able to, like Paul, like Luke, because Luke was the disciple of Paul, to be able to set in order the things that are most surely believed among us, because there's an on the fundamentals of our belief system. If we bring that scripture from the book of Proverbs and say, oh, he that, that covereth his sins shall not prosper, and he whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall find mercy. That's it. You're quoting from Old Testament. If you come with 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 and say, if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You will say it was written to, to Gnostics, not to believers. Meanwhile, 
the subject of the book of first john is walking in the light he said this is the message that we have heard from the beginning god is light and in him there is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and our walking is in darkness we lie this john chapter 1 reveals an organic marital relationship that a believer is supposed to sustain with god the context is so clear and it's in the spirit of that context walking in the light if you are going to walk in the light because the light the bible says is that which makes manifest and if you get to walk in the light and there is darkness light will reveal it so if you are fellowshipping in the light there is no way you can avoid confession because light in its very nature has a capacity to unveil have you not read in your bible how that the word of god is sharper than any two-edged sword and the context of that scripture is actually butchering you know when you are butchering and you have a good dagger you can you can locate where the heart is you can locate where the spinal cord is you can locate the liver with a good knife it will know how to unveil the thing nothing will be hidden from a good knife he said that's how the word of god is it has the capacity to pierce and to divide asunder soul and spirit born and marrow in addition to that it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent no nothing can go that deep to intent the word of god has that power it's so it, it, it's it's a manipulative kind of dagger he can he can carve like this and look <laughs> Do you still remember Simeon when Mary and Joseph came for dedication? Raised Jesus up and said, This child is for the rising and the falling of men. And it shall be a sign that many shall speak against. And he looked unto Mary and said, A sword shall pierce your heart. Why? So that the thoughts of many might be revealed. Eh? We'll pierce. We'll pierce on the business as boom. And then it's not his own thought that was revealed. Though. The thoughts of many. The thoughts of many were revealed. The word of God also has multiplier re revelatory capacity. When Job was afflicted, eh? the thoughts of many were revealed. You may not know the people around you until a sword, something that is supernatural, now enters into your space. It has a capacity to reveal the thoughts of men. The nature of light is that it has a revelatory capacity. And if you are going to walk in light, the prescription is you will have many things to confess. That is the protocol of walking in light. So if a man is making a case against confession, he stopped walking in light. And the implication of refusing to walk in light is that you have denied the living God. No, you, 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 you didn't get that. God is not only in a book. Some people are fighting to keep a book. There's a book they are fighting to keep alive. Because if the book is closed, the religion is closed. If you like, throw the Bible away. If you sin, he will, he will rise. His discomfort inside of you, he will register it. Now, what that guy is trying to do is to kill that organic dimension so that you become reprobate and your case will become impossible. And the same God you serve will now be the one to kill you. So there's no other way for us to know that that doctrine came from the pit of hell to raise rebels against God that do not know the living God. He leaves fingerprints of his dealings with you on your heart so that you will know how he feels. He's living. So can you imagine how backward men have gone for them to now be using pulpit ministry to pioneer that reprobate gospel? But you see, that's the day in which we live. 
and we need men like Luke that have the capacity to set things in order. Luke's summary of the book of Luke. Luke himself, he summarized the book of Luke in the book of Acts. And he says, the former three times have I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and to preach. So his preaching ministry was predicated of a, on, on a doing ministry. For 30 years, his life revealed what it means to submit to the obedience of his father. The authority of his father. That's what he did for 30 years. If the father says, wake up now, he wakes up. He doesn't have an agenda for the days. The father that gives him an agenda. And he kept doing that for 30 years. That's why before he did any miracle, the father brought accreditation to him and said, this one is my beloved son in whom I am well. No miracle. His living was accurate. And it was upon that accurate living that his ministry was based. And if you check the requirement of ministry in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, Hallelujah. Do you realize that there's no anointing requirement there? It's living requirement. He must be a husband of one wife. That means scripture, scripture is revealing that there's a possibility that you can like many women. But it says that what? A minister of God. In the midst of all the options, he's the husband of I know most of you are not married. When you get married, you will be busy by one woman. What? what, what? Not two. You will be preoccupied. <laughs> That's when you will know that you are not spiritual. There are days where your tongues will be mockery. Even you yourself, you know that you need something more. You will never know how much you need God until you marry. It's, it's a revelation of fibers of your fabric that you are not aware is in existence. Then you will seek God's help. Oh, it's a setup. It's a setup to ensure that the life in the flesh is sentenced to death. That's the only way it can work. Now, you don't have a ministry if you can't keep a woman. Go and sit down. You have no ministry. Our forefathers that pioneered this way, they were able to keep women. What did Paul say, even though he was a celibate, he said, do I not have the power to lead about a sister? He knew it was his own destiny to live without marrying, but he was saying that it is not because he lacks the ability to, to lead a sister. The power is there. It is when you marry that you now discover it requires power. <laughs> I am woman. Requires what? Power. Because the anointing is going to rest on the structure of what you have built as a lifestyle. And Jesus was excellent in living under the authority of God and God attested to that and his spoken ministry was just for three and a half years built on 30 years of living if you if you know the government of God and the place of the government of God in the life of a representative of God you will take more time in your prayers to deal with excesses in your character and a wife is a major tool that will unveil those excesses uh, oh. very soon you will know whether you talk too much you will know you will know and then you now say god I'm, i people say they are blessed when i preach but i've discovered that i have grace to say things that you are not saying that becomes a body it will humble you in that humidity God will find the cracks 
the cracks of your brokenness and the oil of grace of gladness it will flow through the cracks mm. you will discover that uh, fruit is cultivated but gift is coveted you know when you cultivate uh, you understand that? Uh, the fruits of the spirit fruit is what cultivated gift is coveted it's easy to get gift but if you are going to have fruit you will cultivate it you will cultivate it you will cultivate it you need to wake up in the morning and say holy spirit i want to obey you today and then when you go out you you fight with okada slap a boss man insult the grandfather of someone that tried to despise you when you come back home you go back to holy spirit and say i fought i slapped and I insulted the foundation of men. <laughs> Have mercy on me. Then the next day, when you are going again, you say, Holy Ghost, I want to obey you. Every day, come back and report to him. You will know that the cure, that actually fruit is, is cultivated. There will, there's no miracle like on the altar. When you are wedding people, no miracle happens at the altar. <laughs> <laughs> the way they came that's how they will start the journey they come with suit like this come with suit my eco sealer I make wake up wake up <laughs> In the resources with which you came that's what you will go and use to start the project Is cultivated. He said that a man of God must not be a striker. That means if people offend him, he should not be making plans on how to retaliate. He should have the capacity, he should have valves here and valves. So when pressure mounts, he, he, he releases it. If not, human beings can make you become an unbeliever in the night, not even in the daytime. And you want to kill. He says, not a striker. A man that can let go. You will not learn that in Bible study. You cultivate it. Because most of you, you came from lineages of hunters. People that hunt. So you will need to learn. Hey, you will mean that. That one is not by accident. That's when you will know how much you need the supply of God's grace. Because fruit is cultivated and gift is just coveted with fasting and prayer, and you are asking. That's all you need to do to get a gift. And if you continue what you did to get the gift, it will grow. So you cannot be a man with big gift and it is hanging on no character. You are a disaster. You are working for Satan. Satan knows that all the things you are going to achieve with that anointing will be harvest for him. Those are the men that do damage in the body. They use the gift to attract so many people. But with the false character, they begin to damage the very destinies of men that the gift has attracted. So he said the former three times. I, I, I'm saying this to know what is your emphasis. Because probably you came here expecting you are going back with wind anointing. God will make it available. But this infrastructure that can handle it if it's not there it would cause damage to the body of Christ hallelujah it will do what cause damage there are some kinds of fasting I've not started because I've noticed there are some things that God still needs to deal with it's easy to generate anointing I've not started those kind of fasting yet I'm still trusting God. There are, there are some cultivations I'm doing. When I see that God has helped me in those areas, then I can do that type of fasting. If the anointing comes, it will have a solid foundation. He said, not guilty of filthy looker. A genuine man of God. 
cannot be motivated. There is nothing you will see that his testimony will change. He said, Ah, he's speaking something. That, no, no. He's dead to money. That is cultivated, not coveted. A man of God, according to scripture, you can't move him with anything his eyes see. That's Jesus' pattern for ministry. Everything the anointing did, the anointing was resting on a foundation of 30 years of accurate living. May the Lord give you understanding. Let's push on. First thing we need to establish there is that the lecture that Jesus had with this disciples was on one subject only and the subject of the lecture were things pertaining to the kingdom of God so when Jesus came for 40 days he was trying to establish the most important things and the emphasis of his 40 day lecture were things concerning the kingdom of God I forgot no 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 i'm just this is my own bible so i'm i'm showing you that the content i didn't bring my diary it's on my table in that diary i summarized the bible the book of genesis what's the meaning exodus leviticus numbers Deuteronomy, joshua judges to revelation we we can draw a thread from genesis to revelation you will see that this book is the book of the kingdom this is not a text for motivational preaching if you want to do motivational preaching there are many textbooks you can find and and the authors are not necessarily christians all right because motivational preaching is not the reason for which this book was designed and if this is your major text for motivational preaching you will soon enter into error because this is not the purpose for which this book was designed this book is a book of the kingdom For some others, God will put the burden of some nations. Slavery, Rwanda, Uganda. But there is an assignment for everyone. It doesn't matter where you walk, that's your walk, that's your job. But your calling is your walk.